Someone's just stuck that on, like a fan. <laughs> Tom McRae probably never thought a 16-year-old boy in a dress would so profoundly change his life. Does this feel like something tangibly different with this story? Yes, it does. McRae wrote the lyrics for a musical that's rocked London's West End, just landed in the U.S., and is gearing up for a revolutionary tour to Broadway. I hope that's something we can do. There's a clock on the wall, it's moving too slow. It's got a Everybody's talking about Jamie is the riotous tale of a teenage boy who dreams of being a drag queen and wants to wear a dress to his prom. Inspiring, heart-wrenching, and potentially game-changing for queer teens. Maybe there'll be someone who'll watch this and it'll just change how they feel about themselves the next day. And that, for me, would be, would be you know, the, the biggest accolade. And it's not pulled out of thin air. But Jamie is hiding the truth. I'm going to prom in a dress. Jamie Campbell is the real-life inspiration for the show. His story in 2011 catapulted his small English town onto national TV sets and rallied a school around the kid who felt like the outcast. When we watched the documentary, we thought, oh my God, this is amazing. That's a song, that's a song. There were so many moments that just sang. We made uh, Jamie Campbell, we fictionalized him into Jamie New, uh, kept his mom Margaret in the story, and I made up all the other characters because the documentary wasn't allowed to follow him into the school, so we didn't know what happened there. So can you tell me what the real Jamie has felt uh, about this kind of adaptation? For me, um, I always think of them when we're doing anything like this. In 2016, We'd written the songs, we'd written the script, and we invited Jamie to come to Dan's studio in Hackney in East London, which is a beautiful studio. And that's where we'd written in, uh, the songs and recorded the demos. And we played everything for Jamie. And at that point, he, he knew there was a musical, um, but he didn't know the scale that we intended. I think he thought it would be like three actors and a piano in the top room of a pub. Um, he didn't realize it was gonna be a full band, cast of 30, you know, like a proper production. And he was, genuinely floored by it. And I mean, at one point he kind of fell on the floor. It's a story too of parenthood and a generational divide in understanding sexuality. Jamie's father having told him in a message, he doesn't want to see him again. I, I don't think Jamie would mind me saying this, but that's the last contact he's had with his dad since. He's not an out and out villain because he, he doesn't, he's not trying to be awful. He's just limited in his ability to accept and to look beyond his own expectations of his son and his own life. You don't know what you don't know, and a lot of times the things that you learned when you were a kid and held as truths throughout your youth sort of stay implanted in your mind, even mm. in, in your older age. And I think for anybody who's come out to their parents or who's had a conversation like that, it's something that you have to, to some degree, sort of understand. That yeah. they are coming from a very different sort of foundation and that it may be hard for them to make the leap. Yeah, and I think we probably all if, I mean, I'm not a parent, but you, I imagine parents all have allowed themselves to fantasize about the child they're going to have, that first football match, the school play, the, the first holiday that's all going to be so amazing. And then this kid appears and they don't like football and they, they forget their lines and on the holiday they just scream all the time. And a parent has to go, okay, I have to readjust my expectations because their life is, is, is theirs to be lived. The story is also adapted into a film. I wanted a son so badly. I got you. It's trying to bring that reality to the coming of age genre. I don't know how you could put anything above the love for your child if you're a parent, uh, but that's what happens. So I guess it's trying to kind of understand but not excuse why someone would do that. Because in the end, it is indefensible. But in their head, I'm sure that they feel quite rational. I'm gonna be the one. Now it's filling seats at LA's Amundsen Theater, the first stop for the show in the US. but. Hardly the last. It's really down to the audience and down to the critical responses and the social media buzz. A surreal journey for a man getting used to being part of something this extraordinary. My idea was everyone has a dress that they want to wear that they're scared to wear. Jamie's is literally a dress and it's about going out in public, but we all have something. We, we always wanted to feel like it was happening on the next road down from you, that these could be your neighbors, if not literally your son, your mother, but someone else's son that you knew and that you'd be able to see yourself in Jamie. James Packard Newsy, Los Angeles.